So the next type of differential equation that we're going to look at is called the linear equation. Um, so linear differential equations have a particular form, right? So the form of the linear equation is always of the following. We have y prime, okay, so here y is going to be our dependent variable, x will be independent. Uh, y prime minus some function of x times y, or plus or minus, doesn't really matter, is equal to some other function of x. Okay? This, is, this is what a linear differential equation looks like. Okay? Um, so any, any equation that can be put into this form, um, possibly with a bit of manipulation, would count as a linear. Okay? Um, notice, by the way, that if, if g of x is equal to 0, you actually have a separable equation here. Okay? So you can separate these things if g of x is equal to 0. Right? Um, otherwise, otherwise, it's not a separable equation, so we're going to need to look for new techniques to solve these things. Um, now, just to get us started, kind of one of the important things with linear equations is being able to recognize when you've got one. Right? Um, once you know that you've got a linear equation, there are standard techniques that we're going to develop um, momentarily um, that let you solve those equations. So first, we need to know that we're dealing with a linear equation. So here are some examples. We're going to look at these and try to decide. Is it, uh, is it linear or not? Well, this first one here, this is linear. Because I can write it in the form y prime minus x times y is equal to 0. Right? So I've got my, my f of x over there is, is minus x my g of x is 0. And, and because g of x is equal to 0, it's also separable. Okay. Now, if we come to something like this, well, this one here is going to be neither linear nor separable. Okay. Typically, if you see any sort of function of y, other than just y itself, you are not dealing with a linear equation, right? Um, similarly, if there was any kind of like, you know, if we had a y prime squared or anything like that, if there was any kind of um, function of y prime, not a linear equation, right? So y, prime, y has to show up on its own. So does y prime. So that e to the y guarantees that it's not linear, right? There's no way to rewrite that as a linear equation, right? Um, I mean, you could solve for y, you could, you could use logarithms to solve for y, but then you're going to have a logarithm applied to the y prime, and then you're, you know, you're just going to go around in circles. Um, it's not separable either because we have, an, we have a sum rather than a product, right? So there's no way to write this as a function of x times a function of y um, and solve by separation, right? So this is not an equation that we, we would know how to solve using the methods that you're going to see um, in your calculus course. Um, maybe there are other tricks or techniques that could come in handy later on that would let you solve it, but it's not something that we can tackle here. Okay, what about the third one? Well, the third one certainly is linear, right? It's a linear equation. We have f of x, using this notation here, f of x is equal to minus cosine x g of x is equal to cos x, right? Um, so it's fine if we have a nonlinear function of x. No issues there. It's, it's, it's if we have something, um, if we have some function of y, that's when we are no longer talking about a linear equation, right? So that's fine. Uh, what about, is it separable? We might as well ask ourselves that too. Can we separate this? Um, no, right? Because if we move that over, we've got a sum. There's no, well, you know what? Ha! Ah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Because it's cosine, I spoke too soon. We can write this as y prime is equal to cos x. So it's cos x times 1 plus cos x times y. Factor out that cos x, 1 plus y. So it's also separable. OK. Um, so if it's linear and separable, then you, got, then you got some options, right? You, you can decide um, how you're going to do it. Are you going to use the techniques we're about to develop for solving linear equations? 
Or do you want to go back and use the techniques for separable equations? You can go either way, right? Um, this also illustrates that uh, it's not quite right to characterize the separable ones as the ones where g of x is equal to 0, because it is possible sometimes that you might be able to rearrange to get something like that, right? If, the, if these two functions here are, are essentially multiples of an one, if one is a multiple of the other, maybe you can do that. OK, this last one, well, no, right? Um, it's, it's not going to be separable or, or linear, right? Because we move that over, we've got a sum now, a function of x, something that depends on x and y. And there's still this y over here in front of the y prime. Um, this is not going to be separable. It's not going to be linear. Right? Um, if you try to isolate y prime, I guess you could divide through by y. y prime is equal to, so if we rearrange this, we could rearrange it like this. We could say y prime minus 4 log x times 1 over y is equal to 3x. Okay? So what I did is I divided everything by y, I moved that to the other side, brought that over, um, and because you have 1 over y there rather than y, that's what's stopping it from being linear, right? We'd need to have y here, not 1 over y, in order to have a linear equation. Um, so, I don't know, it's, it's close, it's almost the right form, but this, this bit is wrong here, so it's not going to be linear.